cataracts, glaucoma, uh, corneal transplantation, uh, and this primary eye care. Uh, so a lot of people uh, may ask, so why um, the cosmetics part of it? Um, over the last decade, uh, most progressive practices, ophthalmology practices, have been providing more and more uh, cosmetic procedures, uh, primarily because of the um, uh, baby boomers, there's, there's a big demand uh, for cosmetic procedures. Um, even though we have been doing cosmetic procedures in terms of upper lip, blepharoplasty, the lid lifts, um, and some skin resurfacing, uh, the first people to pro perform Botox were ophthalmologists. So it hasn't always been the domain of plastic surgeons, uh, cosmetics. For example, liposuction was uh, first uh, done by gynecologists and not plastic surgeons. So because of the, uh, the interest, we have started a, a separate <coughs> department of uh, cosmetic and uh, laser medispa. So what I'll do is I'll uh, show you some boring slides and then quickly uh, just give you uh, pre and post uh, photographs so you have an idea of what the lasers can do. So. Okay, this is the most boring uh, slide. <laughs> so this was after my 84th birthday, so you know that this really works. Um, so if you think of the, I'll just confine my talk to the face. If you think of the aging face, there are three layers that primarily ages us. First is the epidermis, which is the most superficial layer that causes skin pigmentation, um, difference in uh, color, some uh, mild blood vessels. Then is the dermis, which is the deeper layer, that gives you the elasticity. And so once you lose that, you see saggy skin, wrinkles, and then the musculature. <coughs> it gives you saggy cheeks, upper eyelids, you know, jowl lines. So most of the technology or the treatment is geared towards those three modalities when you want to uh, rejuvenate a face. So basic principles um, in the laser treatment are either you, evap you evaporate the tissue, so the most superficial layers, for example, the skin pigmentation, the laser heats up the area and evaporates the tissue. For the deeper collagen, you heat the tissue. So by heating the tissue, what happens is the collagen gets stimulated. And even after the procedure is done for many months, the collagen keeps on remaking itself and makes the skin taut. So those are the primary uh, ways how most of these lasers work. What are the different modalities that we use currently at uh, our spa for skin rejuvenation? BBL, these are different lasers. BBL is basically broadband light. Um, the laser that we have is the Cyton laser, and there's only one other laser in Syracuse, I think, um, and it's one of the best lasers available. It uses different wavelengths within the laser, within the light, to treat different areas. So every blemish or deformity that you have responds to a certain wavelength. So this one broadband light can be tailored to treat that one specific area, and that's how it works. And then erbium laser is for deeper wrinkles, so it completely resurfaces your face, deep wrinkles. CO2 laser has been forever, uh, but the downtime is much longer. Radio frequency is also used by providing heat to the tissue and stimulates the, the tissue. And the heat, you must have heard about uh, skin tight and other procedures. So now I'll go over the, um, some of the procedures. You have to understand that the, uh, the demand has increased for rejuvenation uh, because of lifestyle changes. From 21 billion to $112 billion are being spent. A um, lot of the money has been spent, I think, not very rationally. Because you know, aging is a normal process which we all have to embrace. Uh, none of these procedures can reverse aging. Um, however, if you listen to the uh, anti-aging society, they profess that within 30 years, we'll be able to stop the process of aging. Yes. 
and within 50 years we should be able to start reverse we'll be able to start reversing the age um, I don't know if it's such a good thing however I think one it behooves the providers and the uh, physicians to be realistic in terms of what our end goals are uh, and to guide our patients so some of the basic procedures are micro laser peel micro laser peel just removes the most superficial skin. Uh, the downtime is really small, very uh, minimal. So you can go back, and this is a, these are the three or four reasons why we do it. Profractional is probably the best thing that has come uh, to the market. What the profractional laser does, it sends the laser beams in small cylindrical fashion. So it treats one area and then leaves the healthy area in between. So what happens is that the recovery time is much faster. So with the older lasers, uh, the recovery time was two, three, four weeks before you could even show your face. Now with the profractional, you can go back in about four or five days because it just treats intermittent areas. It's like cylindrical uh, waves that go through the skin and the surrounding skin just rejuvenates. This thing that I just contour TRL, you, you'll be uh, hearing a lot about this. This is primarily done around the eyes and around the mouth. Basically, it uses different. It's a combination of different modalities that now we can use uh, within the laser parameters uh, for deep lines around the mouth and the eyes. And again, rapid recovery. Most of the lasers that are now in the market and are being used uh, by more progressive practices from the site on has the biggest advantage, and the biggest advantage is decreasing the downtime and uh, causing less injury to the tissue. Clear scan is uh, another laser that we use, and it's primarily used for, uh, you can see small blood vessels on the face and everywhere else in your arms or legs and it's a good laser for that. So this is the Cyton laser that we use. Um, this laser, this is the handpiece, which uh, sends the, uh, the, the light waves, and the treatments as you can see. This is one laser that can treat the acne scars, the veins. We can also do lipolysis. You must have heard about smart lipo. I'll talk a little bit about it. Hair reduction skin firming, permitted, uh, pigmented lesions, and wrinkle reduction. This is probably the most commonly searched cosmetic procedure on the internet. It's called Smart Lipo. Um, the, basically what it is, is a regular liposuction, but it's done with the laser beam. It's not as effective as traditional liposuction, uh, but for people who don't have too much fat, like with a I think up to an inch, this works wonders because the downtime again is much, uh, much shorter than the traditional uh, liposuction. So I'll go through the whole uh, 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 menu with you. Botox, as you know, that has been done uh, forever. It's mainly for wrinkles. Basically, how the Botox works, it paralyzes the muscles that create wrinkles. So and it stays in your uh, local areas for about three to four months. And during that period, the muscles don't contract, and hence you don't get the wrinkles. And over time, if you get it done, it does reduce permanent wrinkles. You don't want to have too much of it done because then the muscles atrophy. And you may see sometimes, you know, uh, some people who overdo it, they'll have very thin muscle and, and glistening skin. Fillers. So the Botox will paralyze the muscle and stays very local, and it removes it. The wrinkles. Um, what the fillers do when you have deep uh, loss of volume, the fillers go in and fill that fill that uh, volume. So most common areas are around here. Some people use it to fill up the lips um, and to give uh, some definition. And again, like I said, it behooves us to be realistic and also uh, provide. You don't want to make people look unnatural. Right? You want to augment what they have. Um, so you, you can see here and around here, 
it just gives you more three-dimensional look um, but some people just go overboard and which I really don't like and this is what oh, this is one of our employees so you can see the Botox before and, and after it makes a big difference there were 5.4 million Botox procedures done in the US alone last year hair removal again six million hair removal procedures done and about 15 to 20 percent of them this year would be met um, it is the procedure is just not done one time it uh, you have to come back five or six times uh, for, the, for a really good reduction for uh, hair removal. again you can see before and after pictures um, this is the profractional treatment. Um, <coughs> one other important um, thing that we use it for is for acne removal. As you know, a lot of the young kids who have been subjected to a lot of medications um, and medications have side effects. And now with the profractional laser, you can really make a big Im improvement in the, um, in the cosmetic appearance. This is another patient. You can see before and after treatment. Uh, and again, there is not much of a downtime. Another before and after. And the laser can actually, you can control the depth of the treatment from 50 microns to about 400 microns. You know, one micron is one millionth of a meter. So an inch has 250,000 microns. So you have a lot of flexibility what area you want to treat and how deep. Again, I mean, we don't see as much over here um, in this part of the, I um, mean, northern New York, but in Manhattan, a um, lot of the patients, elderly patients, um, are coming <coughs> in for a lot of hand rejuvenation. It is the next most popular thing. And you know, you do the laser for the pigmentation, and then you do fillers. And this patient hasn't had fillers yet. And then you put fillers, just the same fillers that you put in the face, to make your hands um, um, look more useful. And this is the arm, as you can see. So some of, a lot of these modalities could be mixed and matched. And here is the chest. And this is after just a couple of uh, treatments. You can see a big improvement. Uh, this is a birthmark, as you can see. Uh, this patient had three treatments. And you can see there's a pretty uh, significant reduction. This is acne rosacea, which is very common in this area. Um, again, you can use oral medications. Um, again, I'm, uh, I'm of the view that medications, yes, you can use them, it takes much longer, and the side effects are quite, uh, uh, I mean, they're quite toxic, especially to the liver. So if you can have this treatment done and uh, circumvent the uh, side effects, that would be the way to go. This is clear scan that we use for veins. Um, as you can see there's a dramatic reduction. Uh, again, you just, uh, this patient, I don't remember how many uh, procedures, how many uh, attempts we made, but about three, I would suggest. Um, this is skin type. Now, the, the way the skin type works, as opposed to the broadband light, is infrared light. Um, and it, it's a band, you know, you slide it up and down, it's a wand basically, and it heats the skin and the collagen underneath. And this is after five or six treatments, you can see the, uh, the, the response. And it's just, it's not a dramatic change, but I think it's a pretty significant change that you will see. And again, you can see here before and after, before and after. The skin type does not work if you have a lot of subcutaneous fat. It works when you have reasonable, I don't know what reasonable is, but uh, about an inch or so. 
This is micro laser peel. Primarily the laser, there's one laser system and it has seven or eight different modalities that we can attach and use them for different purposes based on the wavelength that we need. And here for scar, it does wonders for scars. Um, we have seen patients with surgical scars on the face, uh, accident scars, um, and after two or three treatments you can see a big reduction in scars. And this is a contour TRL, uh, basically is a laser resurfacing. Um, usually you just need one treatment, uh, you're not coming back for multiple treatments. Uh, and especially if you see around here, around the mouth, that's where you see the most significant uh, difference. The deeper you go, the longer the downtime. Right. So if you just go make one pass for 200 microns, it doesn't take um, that long to uh, recover, but if you uh, make two passes, it takes a little longer. Same thing here with profractional and micro laser peel. Like I said before, we can combine a couple of modalities to uh, make the uh, laser more effective. This is again a birthmark, and you can see a big difference pre and post. Same thing here. Age spots and vascular lesions. <coughs> pre and post. And you can see the pigmentation here. This patient hasn't had any skin, deep skin resurfacing, only this and so a little bit around the So this just gives you an idea of what the laser is capable of doing. As long as you have realistic expectations, I think it really does add, um, uh, in terms of your lifestyle enhancement, if these things bother you. I think if these things don't bother you, then there's absolutely no reason to have anything done. Uh, so tattoos is another big, big thing. About 40 million Americans currently have tattoos. And you know, it's, it's, it's an epidemic. And um, last year, there were about uh, one million procedures performed to uh, reduce tattoos. And the laser that we have is really one of the best, la it's the best laser. It's, a laser. it's called Revlite. Basically, the way the laser works, it penetrates the skin and it disrupts the molecules. And so it disrupts the molecules, uh, and those come to the surface, and then I'll show you. And it has different wavelengths, but different colors. So after six or seven treatments, you start from here, you attack one color, and then the other color, then the other color, and then eventually, uh, you can see how it removes the tattoo. I have some examples here, so you can see before and after pictures. And some people, depending on how many color pigments they have, uh, you could take up to eight treatments. If you just have black ink, that's the easiest one to remove. This is, you know, we've been doing this for decades, as you can see. Uh, the uh, this is called the blepharoplasty for the upper and lower eyelids. Uh, most common symptoms are that your eyes get tired towards the end of the day. Uh, the field of vision is restricted, especially when you're driving. You see the cars are coming right close to you before you realize that the cars are there and difficulty reading. Uh, so primarily what we do is we uh, demarcate the area in the upper eyelid, we give some local anesthetic, we remove the skin. <coughs> Sometimes there is fat underneath that we remove or just use heat to uh, shrink the fat and then we just suture it up. Uh, you're a little black and blue for a week or two weeks uh, and that's about it. And you can see here before, after, and before and after pictures. And the same things can be done. I don't have slides for the lower eyelids, but you, the same thing could be done for the lower eyelids. The satisfaction with the lower eyelids is not quite as great as with the upper eyelids because, um, and again, like I said, you have to manage <coughs> expectations. Um, 
lower eyelids are more difficult to treat uh, surgically than the upper eyelids. And clear sense, I didn't want to bring the, because uh, you, you were having breakfast, because I have some, <laughs> dra some dramatic pictures of uh, the fungal treatment. Uh, that is probably the most dramatic difference you will see, because most of these medications that are being used for fungal treatment are so toxic to the liver, and you have to stay on them for years. Uh, and with just two or three treatments with the laser, it really kills the fungal fungus and uh, you get a clear uh, nail. Um, that's about it. Uh, the, uh, you know, the most important thing to take away from this is that there's a, there's a national trend. Uh, there's, there's a big demand for a cosmetic enhancement. Um, and uh, we have to respond to that demand. Um, and how much you listen to the patients, and you, as physicians, I think it's important for us to guide the patients what is realistic, what looks good, um, and not make them look like some, something they're not. Uh, that's where some of uh, our cohorts fail uh, with unrealistic expectations. I think aging is a normal, graceful process, which um, if we can fine tune it, it's fantastic. Um, and we can, um, but um, to a certain extent. That's about it. Any questions? Uh, just out of curiosity, you mentioned the um, the tattoo removal. Uh, what is there? Is there? Is there? You find people do it because they remove it because of their age, or they don't like the tattoo, or what's the most common reason that people want their tattoo? I removed? think age is one, and then sometimes with the services, like in the army now, uh, they won't uh, recruit you if you have visible tattoos. So that's one thing, or they fall out of love with somebody. <laughs> 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 So, yeah. and sometimes they fade. So those are the m most common reasons. Okay. How long do the treatments last? Do you have to go back? Say if you have something like this, does that last for a year? Five years? Uh, the upper blepharoplasties, I would say 10, 15 years would last. Um, and again, I mean, there were some other slides that I didn't bring in for, um, you know, there's a lot of products out there. And like I said, there's a, just from the products alone, there's a $50 billion market, and half of them don't really do anything. I think if you, with the laser resurfacing, along with skin rejuvenation, you have to rejuvenate the skin. And we know that there's certain things that work. We know that vitamin C serum works. We know that constant protection from sun works. So you have to combine those modalities. As far as the bluff, I would say 10, 15 years. Even the facelift, you know, at some point you need a facelift. Facelift is also good for only 10 years. So we don't do complete facelifts. Uh, I do mid facelifts. Um, and we are going to start doing chin implants. But uh, because I enjoy this stuff, and I'm a member of uh, American Society of Cosmetic Surgery as well, so, and certified in doing liposuction, which I don't enjoy, but it's a great procedure. Because um, it's difficult to you know, stay abreast with everything, but this is something which is fun and uh, you see rapid results. And Have you found the demand pretty, pretty steady? And are you I think once, I, I shouldn't use the word hooked, but <laughs> the first time you get Botox and you see the result, um, and like I always tell patients, start slow. You know, you don't want to jump into this thing. You see a dramatic result within a week after you have Botox done, right? So, and patients feel comfortable. Uh, they look more relaxed. And the, then the second step is fillers. Because fillers, you can see instantaneous uh, improvement. Like if you have deep lines here, or you have lost some volume here, or around the eyes, as we are giving you the fillers, which is a hyaluronic acid, and we hold a mirror in front of you, you can see an immediate response. And so the patients can guide us and say, okay, doctor, I think that's enough. There are unrealistic patients who I don't think need anything, but they'll come and push you. No, I think I need something. And those patients you have to send away because uh, I don't think it's, it's realistic. Same thing with lip augmentation, uh, especially with age, you lose the upper lip line and the lower lip lines. And the fillers can really define it, but within reason. Not every, we don't want 
one million Angelina Jolie's running around. But you know, when it's natural, when it's freaking augmented, my my uh, my theory is that nobody be nobody should be able to tell that you had something done. They should say, okay, you look relaxed. Did you you know you were you away on vacation? But if you do it within reason, it really enhances your uh, your look. Uh, some fillers for this area, maybe the chin. And if you just add, what happens is one of the things that make you look older is you lose your three-dimensional uh, face. So the fillers help you to create, recreate that three-dimensional uh, look. Uh, so yes, so there is a demand. Once you see some results, and because you know when we were getting these lasers, we were investing over half a million dollars in these lasers. And uh, we were told that, okay, why are you doing it in this area? There's, there can't be any demand, but there is demand. People, uh, more and more people take pride in how they look, um, even men. I was reading a crazy study where in South Korea now, the cosmetic uh, sales are equal between men and women. So, you know, the, the trend is changing. Like back in the 17th century, Men wore more wore more makeup than women did, so it's it's um, it's turning around. People are more aware. Um, I'm going to give you an example. There's a friend of mine who's a um, who's married with four kids, and he was going for an interview in the morning uh, for an advertising company, and the guy was literally at, at the gym. I saw him applying like uh, what do you call it? blush <laughs> in the gym. He said, "No, I've been told by my recruiter that you have to look vital and." Uh, for, your, for your interview. So the priorities are shifting. But I think again within reason. You know, you can't, like I said, I say over and over again, you can't fight the graceful aging, uh, which is, we'll all have to deal with it as far as, if you don't listen to a society of anti-aging medicine, which they really profess that we can reverse it. But if we can augment it, uh, we can, uh, if it makes us feel better within reason, and uh, why not? Are all the procedures, like the laser procedures, are they done by a doctor, or is it kind of...? It's a combination. Right? Okay. So the hair removal, I, pro I probably won't do it, uh, you know, because it takes... Um, it's a simple procedure that the nurse can do, and sometimes, you know, the, a lot of the patients come in for Brazilians, and uh, they'd rather have the, the female technicians do those. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it depends. Botox and fillers are done by you? Yeah. Uh, we had a nurse <coughs> practitioner that was doing it. Uh, in a lot of practices, like in Manhattan, you see uh, uh, nurse practitioners will do it, or nurses nurses in New York State can do it, uh, if you feel comfortable uh, that they are trained well in your practice, you can let them do it. Even for the laser treatments, you mentioned a four to five day recovery. Um, what exactly is your face like? What's it doing? What does your face look like? <laughs> <laughs> right. Are you going to work? Right. Well, like I said, it depends how deep we go, right? So if you just do 50 microns, uh, you'll be just slightly flushed. You'll be red. If you go 200 microns, you'll be a little more red. If you do 400, you know, you'll have crusting. Uh, as if it's like a second, a second degree burn. So the deeper we go for deeper wrinkles, the more results you'll see. Because the skin has to regenerate, right? So it takes a while for the skin to regenerate, about uh, 10 days to two weeks. And then the advantage is, because of the heat it generates, the collagen keeps on reformulating for the following six months. So you'll see your face tightening and getting more firm for the following six months after the laser. Does insurance cover most of these procedures? None of these procedures. Uh, I think that insurance should cover at least the acne uh, and the fungal uh, toenails because um, I think medically it uh, is better for the patient not to be uh, exposed to the toxic effect of uh, uh, the medications. Uh, upper lid blepharoplasties, they will. Uh, what you have to do is you have to show them <coughs> that on a visual field testing, that it is affecting your field of vision. So the way we do it, we do a field test, the way you look normally, then we tape the lids up. And if we can show them before and after pictures that by taping the lids up, 